I'm a very concerned member of the JPS community. I'm here tonight as a parent of two white children. My parents are white Americans, my siblings are white Americans. But our skin color is apparently evil and dangerous, according to one board member. Perhaps more than one board member. We would all like to find out who else defines my family and ancestors as evil and dangerous. How can children with white heritage feel safe when a board member posts racist statements against whiteness and white folks? I have so many questions. All right, guys, so we got to talk about another story that reveals the overt double standard in our society where there's some people that are allowed to be racist overtly racist and it's totally fine it's totally okay they can keep their jobs they won't be removed they won't be expelled to the edges of society uh and then you have other people who if they say something that is perceived to be racist it is the worst thing in the world people are boohoo whining and crying they're protesting in the streets and that person is exiled to the edges of society never to be heard from or seen again because apparently racism is so bad and this story right here is about a michigan school board member by the name of keisha hamilton who happens to be a black woman right she's a soul sister okay and she put out some tweets that a lot of people are upset about because it sounds like she's very racist towards white people and there was a school board meeting uh that happened in which you had members of the community who were against this type of overt racism in her tweets speaking out against her and protesting against her being on the school board because of her overt racism and apparent biases and prejudices towards whites take a look tonight i am out front of jackson high school where this week residents and others voiced their opinions on a trustee member's tweets in a meeting held to swear in two new officers and elected leadership positions, the focus from those who attended turned to something unrelated to school. Two tweets sent out in December from her personal account. One from mid-December that you can see on the screen. Trustee Keisha Hamilton says, quote, whiteness is so evil. It manipulates, then says, I won't apologize for my dishonesty and trauma-inducing practices and thinks you should applaud it for being honest about its ability to manipulate and be dishonest. A second tweet was sent earlier in December from her personal account to a response of a man saying black male alone raining foggy hiking you write the rest of the script to which she responded the last thing you have to worry about is an animal though that could be a very real threat more dangerous are any white folks you may see on the trail be safe some people in attendance called for Hamilton's resignation she accused others for attempting to divide this community this is exactly what she wants this is why she is here it is not for the students, the district, or the community. It is for her fame and notoriety and the intentional distraction from the great work that this district does. These posts were made to incite and divide with no explanation of her supposed intention until after she incited all this anger. She knows exactly what she's doing while others came out in support of Hamilton. I know it's important to be able to have these kinds of discussions in the classroom. It's important to be able to have these kinds of discussions at the faculty level and also here with the board. So I hope that you don't dismiss her comments. I hope that you don't represent her as evil, but she brings something that's vitally important to us and I appreciate that. Thank you, Keisha. <laughs> The meeting drew in about 100 people. School officials made the decision to bring in uniformed police officers for protection. Hamilton explained what she meant by her tweets by saying whiteness is a construct, a normalization with a foundation in white supremacy as referenced by the murder of George Floyd, the massacre of black residents in Buffalo, New York, the attempted kidnapping of Governor Whitmer, the January 6th insurrection, and inconsistencies with the criminal justice system. The real issue is not actually about me, and I realize that. What I am experiencing publicly as a black woman is what many of our black students and other vulnerable and marginalized groups are experiencing privately. The national temperature is at a boiling point and this type of bullying, intimidation, gaslighting, ignoring and attempting to silence that we have seen for a very long time not only from individuals outside of this county, but also from this board table 
is what's causing our educational system to fail here in Jackson. At the end of the meeting, other board members spoke on what happened and are ready to move forward. We have a lot of work to do. We can only address these issues if we can come together, agree to disagree, understand, take the time to ask those clarifying questions. At the fundamental level, our actions, our words, our beliefs should come from a place of love. Your Jackson Neighborhood Reporter, Joe Gebhardt, Fox 47 News. Yeah, so I want you guys to understand just kind of how crazy it is that people are defending this, especially again in 2023 where uh, this type of overt racism, people who have this type of bias and prejudice that are sitting in positions of power, um, they're not supposed to have these types of feelings towards people of other races okay and i'm pretty sure that the response to this would be a lot different i'm pretty sure there would be a whole lot more backlash if this person was a white male or a white woman okay this uh person she tweeted out she said whiteness is so evil it manipulates then says i won't apologize for my dishonesty and trauma inducing practices and thinks you should applaud it for being honest about its ability to manipulate and be dishonest. Yeah, so again, just replace whiteness with blackness and you make this woman white. And again, how do you think people interpret that, right? Blackness is so evil. It manipulates, then it says, I won't apologize for my dishonesty and trauma-inducing practices, yada, yada, yada. The last thing you have to worry about is an animal. Though, that could be a real threat. More dangerous are any white folks you may see on the trail. Be safe. Again, just imagine if somebody said, the last thing you have to worry about is an animal. Though, that could be a very real threat. More dangerous are any Negroes, right? Any blacks you may see on the trail. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. She's saying white people are more dangerous than animals, right? You gotta, you you need to be more worried about a white person than I don't know some random bear, right? Okay, uh, found another job eventually. Thank you. The effects of this stuff last. Working slash living around with white folks is incredibly difficult. Being subjected to them, their violence and treachery is severely abrasive. But they sleep peacefully at night. It's just tough out here. Again, incredible. Just imagine if you replace the word white with black. She also says white women are the stupidest, right? The stupidest. Um, I'm not sure if stupidest is, is a word. Maybe it is. But this is what she says. Again, can you imagine a white male on a school board saying that black women are the stupidest? I think there would be an uprising. There would be all hell breaking loose. This person would be accused of being a racist bigot. But yet, because it's a black woman, somebody who claims victimhood status, oh, no, it's okay. She's 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 just, you know, experienced trauma. And that's what really kind of gets me about. That's what pisses me off about this. This woman has the nerve to try to deflect criticism by basically trying to, again, paint herself as a victim. Well, what I'm experiencing right now is what a whole lot of black people experience in private. As if the people are wrong to criticize you for overtly racist tweets. You are a racist sitting on a school board. How in the world can anybody trust you to make decisions that are best for all students when you clearly, clearly don't like people based off their skin color? You clearly have bias against them. You clearly, clearly hate them. Based off their skin color, you said they were more dangerous than animals. So again, think about what she probably believes about the average white child. Probably not good things. And you think this person should be sitting on the school board making decisions about what's best for their education? I don't think so. We all know that if this person was white, particularly a white male, if she had a penis, uh, they would be calling for her to resign. And he would have to to resign but because she's black and allegedly has a vagina oh well you know we just need to move forward right let's just move forward nah the woke revolutionaries don't move forward 
right? They don't give you the benefit of the doubt. When they're upset, they keep going until they get what they want. And these parents should not stop uh, protesting against this woman until she's removed. She should be removed because that's the standard. That's the precedent that's had, that's been set, right? Zero tolerance for racism, right? That means you have zero tolerance from it coming from anybody. Doesn't matter what their skin color is. Because this type of overt racism and prejudice against whites is not okay. Now, here's the thing. If we lived in a society where, hey, whites could say the same stuff and get away with it, I would have no problem with this. I'd be like, hey, well, it is what it is. This is what she said. Hey, it is what it is. Because I, I don't necessarily, you know, believe in just, you know, levying out, you know, crazy punishments for people because of stuff they say on social media. But since we're living in a society where this has become the standard, particularly when it comes to punishing whites, then you got to apply this to everybody across the board. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't punish a white person for saying just even something even remotely controversial that may have some racial undertones or connotations. And then you have people like this woman who's just overt racist, spewing racism online. And oh, well, she can just get a pass because she, she's black. She's a woman. It's amazing. Um, I, I don't think that these um, these parents should stop protesting. I think they should continue to protest. They should demand that she resign. Um, it doesn't seem like she's apologetic about it. She's not really going to take it back. She's just, you know, standing on what she said because she's a so-called victim and she thinks it's okay to say that. And that's just not how it works. I'm not trying to live in that type of world. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.